<laughs> look where I am again, and look who's here. Do you know, so it's exactly a year yeah. since we were here, and it's Four Acre Farm, near Ringwood, Hampshire, south of England, and Kate is in her second summer now. Kate Forrester, ex-chef. Yes. No market gardener. Still a bit of chef, a little bit of chef still. Still chef. <laughs> yeah. And that's for working with kids particularly is what you want to do, isn't it? A lot. Yeah, that is that's the that's the goal. So we're right. doing little bits of that already, but that's the main thing. Yeah. So we're gonna see in the video a bit of infrastructure that's still being built for mm. that. <laughs> and we're gonna look at the garden now, the, the market garden, is it Almost an acre crop ground or not quite? Yeah, I'd say it is, it's almost, yeah, because yeah, we've so added quite a few beds, but yeah. Three and a half thousand square meters probably. Oh, that's a lot, isn't that it? That sounds like a lot, yeah. <laughs> it feels it, like a lot. <laughs> Molly, your friend has joined you, Molly Taylor. Yes. And we're going to see her later. Yeah, and just from June, so yeah. So it's, it's you been, and Molly? Yeah. Volunteers? A volunteers bit. a little bit. We have regular volunteers, but they don't come for that long. But yeah, we do have the same people coming back now, which is really lovely because we're getting to build, as we've always wanted, build a community. There's people getting to know mm. each other here and enjoying it. And they're starting to yeah. learn more and, and pick up more skills. But Great. also they're, they're all saying that they're feeling so many different benefits from being here, which is, again, oh, what it's about that's for good us. Here. Yeah, and we're selling to local shops and then to local shops chefs as well so mm. we're keeping it local um but it and we've actually had um where we sold directly from here and we want to do more of that next year as well have a mm. stall so that people can come maybe once a month and and buy directly from us and get to see where it's grown as well sort mm. of have an open morning okay. yeah we had one of those it was lovely it went really well oh yeah and, and all no dig so yes. we, we have a quick look yeah <laughs> uh, i'm impressed because there's actually not many weeds i know that you could set your hand stand as high don't you oh well yeah because of you <laughs> yeah i mean obviously i know what homemakers is like so oh. um that's always going to be the goal and i think you know my aim no, is no. maybe in 10 years that it'll look something oh, no. like yours <laughs> you're, you're really not far off i mean you i would say you're a true grower because you you really see the imperfections, mm. perhaps even more than you see the, the magnificence. Yeah, I mean, sometimes like on a sunny day like that, it is really enjoyable. And I love having all the height and, and all mm. the colours and the flowers. And then mm. you're seeing all these different insects all of the time. That's yeah. just wonderful. It, and this was just a, a, a barren, arable field. Well, it? exactly the same yeah. as what's next yeah. door. Yeah, we've yeah. just, like I said before, like it's just <laughs> a slice. Just look at the difference. It is a huge difference, especially even when you've walked up through the uh, orchard and you come back down you really notice oh, the nice. difference in the green like it looks so much more lush yeah yeah <laughs> and well we've just had our first sweet corn today and that is yeah. ridiculously sweet so that's a joy again yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah i love all the summer stuff but then i mean i really love all the greens like the kale was much better this but year than it was are you thinking to keep going through the winter then, or? yeah wow. Mm. What, like restaurants? Well, yeah, we're actually, what we are, we've been planning on doing is putting out a CSA just for greens. So just a 10 pound oh. box of greens and that will be it, you know, so it's not that sort of big variety That's of different a things. Idea. And then you haven't got to be buying in potatoes or that sort Exactly. Of thing. It's yeah. just keep it that. I mean, there was a model yeah. in, the, in, the, in the US that does that. And I just thought that's mm. a really great idea. And then it right. keeps it simple for us as well. Yeah. We can just grow lots of, you know, the same things. Yeah. And yeah. then, yeah. And your climate maritime here mm. is not too too cold. What, what was your lowest temperature last December when it was really cold? Oh, I mean, it probably, I think it was minus five, but it was that, that 10 days yeah. where it was just solid. Yeah. And we came, yeah, we came here and it, like absolutely everything, including the polytunnel was just rock solid. Yeah. But I was so amazed at the spinach. The spinach did, it was, was we got it just at the right size. It was small enough to, and had big enough roots obviously yeah. to hold yeah. on. And yeah. then it did fantastically in the spring. Okay, so, give yeah. us your tip then. What was the sewing date? I don't remember Charles, <laughs> okay. I'm not like you. <laughs> I haven't got it all memorised. I, I, I reckon it. it will be back now. <laughs> yeah. We're still saying now, 20th yeah. of August. Mm. It's 20th of August today. And if you want to have a look, do check out the video we made this time last year as well. And you'll see what this four acres look like. Mm. Um, I don't even know if we did, we have much grass or clover? It was quite well, barren, wasn't it? Yeah, because it? it'd been really dry, hadn't it, as well? Yeah, it just took a long time for anything it's, to germinate. It's an advantage of the rain. Yeah, definitely. The rain has definitely helped to my for some eyes, things. Yeah, it's looking quite lush. And you, yeah. you've got your compost <laughs> structure up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hasn't got any compost in it. No, it's been our lovely drying shed oh. for all the things. And that's where we had the... Because you run out of time. 
to really get it all together at the yeah, end? Yeah, I mean, there's just, it's, I, Molly's going to sort that out. Now that Molly's here, she can put up the divides mm. in it and sort that out. Um, but originally it was going to be a different use. It was going to be, as I said, with Eddie was going to do this drying it all out and then doing the thermophilic composts and, and making them in bulk goes. But oh, nice. again, that takes time because you have to turn it every yeah. week and, yeah. and check, the thermo yeah. check the temperature on it. And yeah. I just need to, uh, for, for where we're at, and the yeah. time constraints, yeah. we just need to do static and yeah. just, oh, we're getting a worm well, rebuilt for us as well. A really big great. one. Yeah, that's very exciting. Where will that be then? We're going to put it in underneath, I think in one of the bays. Yeah, oh. so that it's protected from the weather, but yeah, yeah so... Because um, we had a look at your compost earlier and mm. it's a lot of weed seeds, isn't it? Oh yeah, yeah. But actually quite nice. It's nice, <laughs> yeah it is, because there was a good mix of wood in there as well. Just so <laughs> many weed seeds, it never got hot yeah. enough. Wow. <laughs> and, and your main compost input is the horse manure? Yeah, so it was the originally was all the horse manure that we've got a local guy and... Um, so and that's what this is here, it's... Yeah, that's it broken down a bit, yeah. Slightly woody? Yeah, I think that's the the larch he said, he said larch pudding. I mean, you can see also though when where we've like cleared beds and you start to see and some of our soils come up, you can see that kind of sandiness in it as well. It is, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So that's mixed with a bit of your soil. Yeah, exactly. Actually. So you can kind of see that grey, much more grey, yeah. isn't it? Our, yeah. our actual yeah. actual soil is so grey. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. funny, it doesn't have that dark humus yeah. colour. Yeah. But uh, what I'm thinking though, also looking at this, is picking. Yes, it takes forever. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, you've got more. You've got more than you had. So yeah. I suppose that's where Molly comes in. Exactly. I mean, honestly, it's really surprising how long harvesting takes yeah. when you're doing lots yeah. of different things. Yeah. Um, and we've harvested a lot over this summer. We've been really pleased with that, actually. Yeah. And yeah. this is your propagation? Maybe? No, not really. This is where some, some tomatoes self-seeded and then we potted them on and then we basically forgot about them. And these? then these bits, yeah, that's just things. And we've got a whole load more to do. Basically, this week is going to be sowing seeds but yeah you're, you're doing all that side with we well, the poly tunnel was getting so hot that yeah, yeah i mean for luck in, in, in the, the spring, spring in we have it all yeah there's a whole side so we just have beds on one side and then we have a whole bench <laughs> But yeah, look at these tomatoes. You've got a lot of tomatoes still to we, come. Yes, we've had a, we've had loads, and we've we yeah they they were really late though. But but in the last sort of three weeks, we've cropped a lot of them. And yeah. you're feeding just with a bit of seaweed. Bit of seaweed, yeah. yeah um, just because the soil is still. I mean, we mulch. We didn't actually mulch in between all of the mustards and salads that we had in here. We just cleared cut them and then planted straight into it. Did you? Yeah. Right. So, but we will mulch for when these clear to put the next ones in. Yeah, we, t we had a bit of trouble getting this up, so it was uh, late. I'm interested, why did you go for a narrow, a smaller one uh, compared to that? Money. Money, this you'd is... have liked another one like that. Yeah, we couldn't afford one. Uh, what, what is the price difference? Um, that was nearly four grand and this was under two grand. Ah, uh, right. Yeah. And that's without the erection though, that's just the structure? Yeah, that's just the structure. Which yeah. you put up? We put up, yeah. So this is recent, therefore the plants have only gone up. Yeah, the plants Once were desperate June. to go in. So some of these aubergines are sort of suffering and we just put a few uh, calabrese in there. Um, yeah, so these were all in pots for way longer than they should have been. Mm. So they're only really sort of getting going now. But I mean, if we just get some off them, then we haven't wasted the plants completely. And yeah, yeah. We'll see well, how yeah. long they go. Maybe they'll go well in the autumn. Yeah. But there's a lot of work, isn't it? Tomatoes, all this side shooting and yeah. training. Yeah, I really like growing tomatoes, so I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're my favorite, well, apart I like from garlic. It too, but I, every time I do it, I think, God, I'm taking so long over this. And, yeah. And the price of the tomato is not really reflected, I don't feel. We charge more than the market price for tomatoes. Yeah, good, wasn't it? Um, just uh, because how, by kilo or by the variety you charge more yeah by the variety then yeah um, i'm selling cherry tomatoes i'm selling 250 gram um, bags for one pound 65 so yeah multiply up that's about six pounds 60 a kilo yes does that sound about what you we're selling us for 12 pound a kilo what yeah <laughs> Because wow. you can't get these varieties. They're all, like, majority uh, of them are not varieties okay. that you're, you're getting anywhere else. Early. Yeah. Oh, well, that's fair then. Yeah. But are you, you're selling that uh, to restaurants like that, not to yeah, shops? And, yeah, and shops. The ones that appreciate them will take them. If they're paying you to a panic, the customers are... Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. That's an eye opener. Yeah. 
Just because they are, you know, this is very seasonal yeah. for, for yeah. the UK. Like, well, they're totally special, aren't they? Yeah, they're they massively are. massively undervalued. So What's that we under can... the fleece here? Uh, kale's under there. Oh, is that insect? Yes, we, the flea beetle has been, I think they've chilled out at the minute, but they were, I feel oh. like they were here all year. Okay. Like, are they supposed to die at some point? Yeah, <laughs> What's their well, life no. cycle? No, yeah, yeah. So they, that's what right now is the calmest it's been on them. Okay. But if even on some of the mesh when they're smaller, they get through. So I wonder if that you got rape fields nearby. We over there, yeah. So last year the rape was there, and yeah. now it's just in the one across that way. So yeah. It must be that because yeah. I don't get it that bad. And you're watering here. It's just a hose. Yeah, and we haven't actually done, we do like, well, like you were basically just when they're young, we water them. Yeah, water for them the, in. Yeah, and yeah. then because it's rained so much, we haven't done much more of that, to be honest. Okay, how much rain have you had? I <laughs> Trick question. I've just given Kate a rain gauge, actually, because I, I want to find out. I, all of us, I feel it would be really interesting. Definitely. Swap notes. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And Mitch, too. Um, this yeah. is Mitch Grows here, for, for those of you who might come across him on Instagram and YouTube? Is he on YouTube? Mitch? A little bit now, yeah. Yeah, okay. I think he's doing more on YouTube now. And he's writing a book about old seed varieties? Heirloom seeds, yes. Heirloom seeds, so that's what's yeah. going on there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> some really cool squash as well, some really old varieties. I don't actually know what, which are these one. Some... Mitch's ones, ah, yeah. Okay. So they've all got really interesting backstories and, mm. you know. These are proper winter squash, not yes. pumpkin? Yes. I mean, I'm always keen to make that distinction because yes. they're not the same thing. No, they? Well, they don't These will make it. a really hard yeah. skin and sweet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're all actual squash, yeah. Brilliant. This is your, well, what do you call this one? Your orchard? Yes. So, yeah, so it's hanging on. Um, Why hanging on? Because the, the, the soil, again, is just not for, well, it's not really for anything at the moment, but especially not for trees. Mm. So they are struggling. Um, but the trees maybe weren't so good as well. The tree, we weren't, we didn't buy these trees. We, these were given to us by the tree council. So I don't know what nursery they came from and we didn't get a choice on the varieties, but there are a few at the back that we did buy ourselves from the uh, donations. And that was uh, through the Heritage Fruit Company and they seem much stronger and much happier. Were they? So yeah, that might be the actual. And here, Yes. you've got you just thought you'd take in a bit of ground to grow yeah, this squash. Yeah, basically, we're going to start building beds all through as it thins right. out. These trees are much closer together because of the dwarf variety, but there's much more space at the back. And that's for, uh, we're going to put in a kid's veg garden so oh, they can come in and do what they want to do and not take I mean, our these stuff. These are just rampant, aren't they? Yeah. It's so funny they'll to go see and the go. Yeah. yeah, they'll plough them over. Yeah, so the plan is to then have beds all up through that side for um, yeah for the kids' garden, and on this side we've started making a few beds, but we've run out of time right. doing things for it at the minute. But the plan is in end of September to put more beds as herb gardens. And this is wildflower seed you sowed. Is that Ye right? Yes. Is that what grew? It's some kind of umbrella, isn't it's it? It's a wild carrot. It is a lot. Yeah. Time. But was this just here or you sowed it? Uh, no, we have a seed mix, so I think oh, some of it was already in there. I mean, that's the one that's come out later. We had a whole variety of things here earlier, but now it's they've gone over and this is the one that's sort of hung okay. on last. Yeah, because um, they remind me of the, when I'm growing carrots for seed. Yeah, exactly. That tight cluster yeah. that then opens exactly up. Exactly the same, yeah. yeah. It's the wild carrot. And this doesn't worry you too much, thistles dropping mm, a million mm, seeds? No, not too much. I mean, we just trying to keep on top of the weeding and then yeah. this is used by birds they really like this fluff what like goldfinches or whatever yeah things. yeah i mean we have a we've got a whole charm of goldfinches that um visit us oh we've got owls that's the owl box up there yeah we put it up in the spring and we've got which kind barn owls Oh, we've got two they? babies in there. They're so beautiful. Yeah, they're so beautiful. Else. Yeah, so we're going to carry on the beds all the way along up to this, right, right up okay. to there. So that, that, that we're going to do a bit of veg up here and, and and then mainly herbs, perennial herbs, to so make it easier for ourselves. For your school kitchen. Yes. Is it is this kitchen for schools more than anything, or children? I uh, say. For workshops as well, and for oh, things yeah. that Molly does as well. And, and yeah, I, I want to do sort of harvest and cook days for adults also. So people can come and see, like you know, what a market garden looks like. Right. Then be shown how to pick some things, yep. you know, different ways of harvesting stuff if people don't know, and then what to do with it. <laughs> yeah. 
So yeah, this is the um, the building site. <laughs> Ah. So this has no, this is all built uh, without foundations, there's no yeah, concrete or anything, it's just, it's just that's yeah. Amazing. footings. <laughs> yeah, exactly, that's the footing. Will so it happen this year? Or not yeah, really? yeah, yeah. With, yeah, we hope so. We, and we also, we really want to celebrate um, the Celtic calendar, so mm -hmm. we want to get more people, because we, we did our wassail last year for the orchard and everybody that came absolutely loved it. <laughs> and we've had some fire circles and some women's circles, and so we want to do the whole kind of the traditions, bringing people back back on the land to celebrate mm. special times of the year and mm. tune in with the land again. So we want to host one for the autumn equinox, hopefully. In yeah. my eyes, it's completely transformed. I mean, 18 yeah. months ago, maybe 20 months, it was just an empty field, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. It was, look at it now. Yeah, there's a, lot, there's a lot more going on. I mean, yeah. obviously, I just see all the stuff that needs improving and could be worked on and we're going to yeah. really give these trees a lot of care this this autumn and get volunteers in to well, mulch. In the video this time last year you, mm. know, you were talking a lot about the amount of time effort and money that it needs to get all the infrastructure in yes. place. I mean here you are still doing it but yes. at least you've got your fence, mm -hmm. you've got your hedge planted. Yeah. The fence is mostly working, but you said one rabbit got in. Yeah, the, the gate got left. Yeah, got left open, so yeah. one got in. But yeah, we'll have to chase it's it out. Looking great together to me, anyway. Yeah, the no, I right mean now. it has. It, it, it's it's definitely gone. I think from what we imagined it would be, like it's moved pretty quickly. Mm. Like of getting all of that in, yeah. and also like every bit of money that's come in, we you know we put back into the infrastructure. Like we've got the wash mm. pack now as well, which is mm. just completely life-changing it's such yeah. a nice experience nice especially base, so. yeah and it's going to be so good for the winter as well because when i was harvesting and trying to pack in wind I and rain yeah, on no. my own in the dark it wasn't very nice so um that's just yeah. wonderful i think that's the thing it's I, I i don't know other people's models or how they've done or you know we are trying to do this I hate using this word, but like organically rather than mm. take loans or investment or anything mm. like that. We just wanted to do it naturally so that it just progressed as we could. Mm. And I just think, yeah, we're really hopeful then. We've been making money, but it's just we want to be yeah. able to really ramp that up. Then as soon yeah. as this we can we can because vegetables are only are so much and we've always yeah. wanted this to be a community and learning space as well as agriculture so yeah. um that's where we see the other side of the income coming from yeah. that and yeah so we're very i feel like we're really close so it's exciting <laughs> Good, well, well <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll have a word now with molly just to round this off and and she'll give us an insight into the the, the wildlife mm -hmm. going on in in the meadow down there i'm now with molly who's Kate's partner and friend who's helping with this amazing enterprise here and Molly's passion is looking after this two acre meadow which is she's going to tell us about has lots of your, your passion is conservation and wildlife isn't it? Yes absolutely so my background is conservation um, it's what I did all my all my learning in and stuff and all my experience so I'm the nature head of the of, of the whole uh, <laughs> of the whole makeup so um, but you spend more time up there actually helping uh, the yeah it, absolutely yeah there's there's a lot more jobs that we that we need to do down there so mm. um, yeah I'm an extra pair of hands for Kate but um, but you gave up at like a full-time job was it to do this yes yeah mm. yeah so I was working at um, our local nature reserve and I have been for the past five six years probably um mm. yeah so um i this Were is a passion project going out on your own so well with kate obviously but yeah i mean i probably should have been a bit more nervous than i actually am but um oh, i good. i've got a good feeling good. about it and yeah. yeah um i think i i really believe in what we're doing so i think that really takes yeah. a bit of the pressure off and it's a great resource isn't it look at your you call it a hide yeah, so we've watching. got we've got um, a bird hide that I made out of an old shed that I got off Facebook Marketplace. So really, I just cut some holes out and, and made a window and popped some ID books in there. You know, because this is a this this is a resource for education massively. You know, yeah. for for schools, but not just for young people and and, and educational establishments, but also yeah. for everyone. You know, we run moth oh, trap nights. Yeah. And when we say moth trap, it sounds like we're going to kill them. But we're not. Um, all you do is basically a box with a light. Um, the moths get sort of disorientated and they go in. 
and then they kind of hang out in there until the morning and you then you go and ID them, record them um, because they're a really really important um, species to look at in terms of they're a big food source, they're pollinators um, and they're often forgotten about so yeah I, I fly the flags yeah. for moths here. Fly. And um, your dead head is that a similar sort of thing? You're... Absolutely so it's, it's not quite up to where I'd like it but it's basically a load of uh, old dead wood really good for invertebrates but um, also really good for for uh, rodents because we've seen some kestrels snacking uh, in there so yeah good for birds good for, for, for rodents and then yeah the meadow so when you started here like November 2021 I guess two years ago yeah not quite two full years I yeah think, is it? no yeah. not quite and this was empty field or completely yeah so it was um, just the stumps of the maze um, so oh. really bare uh, not anything other than that. Um, you had it subsoiled? We as did, yes, yeah, same as up breath. there. Yeah. Um, and we also went through by hand and picked up all of the maize. <laughs> so what, you sowed wildflowers? Yes, yeah, you... we got um, a really nice mix from um, one, of the webs one of the websites with some natives on there, making sure, because a lot of the wildflower mixes you can get are a little bit cheesy they're not quite as native as you'd like them to be oh, yeah, not okay. quite as good for wildlife yeah um no so grass? grand mixes of grasses yeah because grass. grasses are an important wildflower as well that people okay. often oh, hate okay. to see but they're beautiful and they yeah. add a lot more variety in there and yeah great for lots of invertebrates and yeah you're just happy with well you can see the line can't you because you stop seeding there yes Yes. And then you left that just a while. <laughs> uh, mixture of rewild. Yeah, so that's effectively how you would rewild. Is is we would have left the whole field. Um, I thought I thought about it, um, you know, because there's quite a lot of hype about rewilding and how good it is. But mm. I I did think it's actually not going to be beautiful <laughs> for a long time. And you yeah. know, one of our aims is to bring people here and and to enjoy it and to learn yeah. and to experience it. And so, yeah, I I put up a little bit of a slither and I thought let's see what happens there oh, that's such a good idea be interesting but yeah and yes. tomorrow <laughs> you're going to be going through here tomorrow yeah we've got um we've got a big sort of power side thing so um it cuts it quite low down is so that reciprocating blades reciprocating blades yeah. and supposedly it, it shoves it into a nice pile for us which will then rake up so uh oh, I found this amazing you're going <laughs> to rake this up because you don't want the soil to improve <laughs> we don't want the soil to improve I know the opposite yeah. of everything everything that, yeah. that you hear but um, yeah so it's just better for the for the wildflowers for the grasses um, not mm. to get overtaken by a lot of the the weeds that uh, you, <laughs> from you yes from the fertile grounds. Are you going to cut that gorse even? No so I'm going to leave the gorse probably another year I might try and trim it up so it gets a lot denser and a lot it, fatter. Is that self-sown or you planted it? No that was all planted but it's taken uh, okay. really really well because of the sandy soil it's perfect uh, yeah. you know at one point this would have been old heathland yeah. um, and so it's you know that's part oh, of its, this its would habitat. Have been heathland, would yeah. have been heathland yeah I mean before that it would have been a forest so yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah that's why I thought the gorse would be a great addition um, we don't have to look I've not ever watered it or fed it or done anything to it and it's oh. probably the healthiest thing <laughs> oh. ever but it's great for the birds so. and you've got hazel coppice down there we do yeah so this year this um february probably march um it all goes so quick we had a ton of hazel donated from the tree council um and the vision from us and the ecologist who works for the tree council was to create a corridor um, because we have dormice not very far away and obviously they require hazel as part of their life cycle so they um you know hazel dormice yeah. so it's a bit for hoping to maybe bring a bit of wildlife in through a corridor but also that we can corridor from wilder areas down there yeah so that's the new forest is just over the over oh, there nice. and that's obviously a, that's a nice old hedgerow that's in here up on the left um so we've got like this weird wiggle of trees going on so we've and got the mice some... can wiggle through your fence <laughs> yes they can wiggle through the fence luckily they um yeah. door mice are quite sweet they go quite high up they're not they don't scuttle yeah. on the ground they like to use the higher up bits of, really? of hedges and stuff oh, so amazing. yeah hopefully we'll uh, it might be a, quite a few years before we see them brilliant well it's been a great pleasure to talk with you and uh, it'll be fascinating to see how this evolves we'll see if we can come back perhaps for another video That'd next year or the year after yeah yeah Thank you for speaking to me. <laughs> okay.